Hello, hello, and welcome to the Here to Uplift podcast, where we center the stories of impactful change makers, entrepreneurs, and community leaders who have done the hard work of uplifting themselves through adversity to get where they are today, and now uplift others along the way in their journeys. I'm Lolo Fisher, your host, lover of all things wellness, healing, and empowerment, and I would greatly appreciate if you show us your support by liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast with others. Let's get into it. Welcome back. In this week's episode, I get to talk to my special guest, Jackie Cabellis. I actually have my pup, Lotto, to thank for bringing us together. I was at a coffee shop with one of my fellow yoga teachers and had my dog, Lotto, with me. And Jackie and her friend came over to pet Lotto, definitely dog lovers, and saw that we had yoga mats, proceeded to ask where we were coming from, and to make the long story short, the stars aligned and brought Jackie and I together. And I am so grateful because she is the most impactful breathwork instructor I have ever experienced. I can't wait for you to hear more about her journey into becoming a trauma-informed breathwork facilitator and the healing and wellness practices she uses in her daily life, which we all can use a little bit more of. Not to give away the whole story, I definitely want you to listen to the whole thing, but if you are someone who has experienced trauma in the past, any trauma, but particularly in this episode, we talk about our experiences with sexual trauma in the past and how we have worked through that in our own identities and in our relationships to really find ourselves and make sure that we're moving forward in healthy ways. This is a conversation you don't want to miss out on. So get ready to hear from a genuine, enthusiastic soul, somebody who always makes me laugh and brings a smile to my face. This is the Here to Uplift podcast featuring special guest Jackie Cabellis. Let's do it. Hello, y'all. Welcome to the Here to Uplift podcast. My name is Lolo, and I'm super excited to welcome my guest today, Jackie Cabellis. Um, I have not known Jackie for super long, but as you might have just heard us talking about, I am already in love and obsessed with Jackie and just everything that she stands for, everything that she is. So I am super excited for us to get into some fun talk today, but also some real talk so we can really think about what that journey looks like when you're figuring out your own wellness and healing and then uplifting and supporting others in their journeys as well. So yes. here is Jackie. I'll let her give a little intro for herself. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Um, a little bit about me. I'm new to the area. We both live in Merced, California, which is Central Valley. Um, I'm from San Diego, big city, big soul, just, uh, just larger than life, you know? Um, I'm 29. Let's see, married to a wonderful man, pregnant with my first child, teaching breath work. Life is good. Life is good. Yeah. Okay, so I want to start with the the humorous stuff, a little icebreaker for us mm. to warm up. Um, the first question would be, if you had to trip and fall into anything, what would you trip and fall into? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Was that too fast? Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> Bye, peanut butter. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking like, okay, let's make this interesting should it be sticky and like hard to get mm. out of what would be like delectable and i can eat my way out mm. of peanut butter all <laughs> freaking day dude okay <laughs> what about okay. that noted jackie likes peanut butter mm. um you know it's funny because when i thought about asking you the question i was like "Ooh, like some beautiful roses and i was like roses have thorns let me take that back no <laughs> not really good my friend and then I went to like metaphorical, like I want to trip and fall into love. <laughs> just like amazing. Be all extra and imagine like the cartoon hearts like floating around you and everything. Amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. No. Mm? Edible. What's edible for me? <laughs> Cheesecake. I don't know. I like your answer better, honestly, because now I'm thinking about all the good food that I could have fallen into that would have been smarter. So good. Okay, icebreaker question number two. Super Jackie. What are her powers? Flying. Flying. Yes. Fly to anywhere, all over. I feel like I, when I was a child, I used to say teleportation, but as I've gotten older. 
I don't need to zip around. I just love scenery and I love nature and I want to be immersed in nature. So how can I have a superpower that lets me do that? Flying, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like when I am on my motorcycle, I am looking at the mountains and the scenery and I'm barely going the speed limit. Like that's my style. Whereas my husband is like, eyes on the road, babe. Like, pay attention. <laughs> Okay, so I would say fine. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, so now it's interesting then because you brought up motorcycle yeah. and that you like kind of coasting, looking at the views. Yes. Does that mean you have a heart leap? Ooh, I, you know, I, that is long term. Okay. I have a short I'm like, I feel like that's a very Harley rider's like perspective versus like a sports bike. For sure. The differences between us are there and obvious and like the types of bikes that we ride. But I would say long term Harley, I started on a Kawasaki Z650, which is like a nice, I would say intermediate bike. And it's, um, you can go fast. <laughs> that is not my style. <laughs> Just nice and chill. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Okay. And perfect date night. Perfect date night. Ooh, um, simple and easy. Probably go out to a nice restaurant, try some new food. I am especially while pregnant, such a new foodie, just like wanting to try everything I could possibly get my hands on. And then maybe, you know, go to a movie and, or maybe go to a show, some kind of music show mm -hmm. and just be with my man. We've been together for almost six years. So, um yeah just nice and simple but present oh that's the most important thing present no phones mm -hmm. i always encourage us to leave our phones in the car so we can offer each other pure presence because that is literally what type spending time yeah. is about and i've never been about that life where you're like sitting at a table with anybody and even one person has their phone i'm like <laughs> probably a little like sergeant like Okay, you know, <laughs> like put okay. it down on the corner, right? Like yeah. we're stuck in. <laughs> yeah, it's like if we're gonna take time out of our day to spend time with each other, we're gonna like actually be present in our bodies. Yeah, here. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the icebreaker question. Well, Those were good. I like it. I'm like still thinking about the peanut butter. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, just... It would be nice. <laughs> like specifically like are we talking brands here like i'm thinking like justin's peanut butter will like the smoothness of that you'll be yeah. that quicker but you can dip anything into it the like, natural one that has a little bit of like the juice sitting on top so it's like i'm gonna die first and then get the stickiness <laughs> <laughs> you got your peanut butter fan is that just me or weird it's things? It's so good. No, it's just, okay, okay. oh my goodness, the theme of the day. Like, yeah. I hope if anyone is listening to this, it's like, what are you going to dip in your peanut butter later? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, to get to the juice of things. Yeah. So I, well, we actually met at a coffee shop. Yes. <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily like through wellness, but yeah. Um, meeting at the coffee shop randomly with my dog, yeah. um, but it turned into like a beautiful opportunity and connection. So yeah. I know you most through teaching breathwork classes here at Uplift mm -hmm. um, and to share with folks listening or watching every single time she teaches a breathwork class, somebody comes out of the class saying like that changed my life. That was transformational. Like I didn't know I could feel that way. Just so many raving comments about your class. So can you tell us a little bit like what is breath work and how did you get into it? Oh, okay. I could talk for an hour. Let me try <laughs> to like really reel it in here. Um, okay. So I got into breath work um, December of 2020. We were in the pandemic already. And at that time, I was just like in this codependency spiral in my relationship we were in long distance and i had all these expectations that couldn't be met and all this stuff and basically i had signed up for a breathwork class like six months prior and i saw it coming up and i was like oh what even is that like how do you want to go and so then that same weekend i had my buddy come down um and he was he was listening to me then listening to me talk thank goodness for him i love him so much shout out trevor and he was just basically like, so have you heard of the term codependency? And I was like, no, I haven't. What is that? He's like, okay, so like, you're that. And like, <laughs> let's get into a book club. 
I need to read it too. And like, let's heal this together. I love that. And it was like the next day was my breathwork class. So like, I learned about this, learned about like how, like what I was experiencing could be healed and uh, which would allow me to live differently, which was the vibe. Right. And then I took that breathwork class, which gave me connection to my body for the very first time since I was a child. And that gave me all of the messaging from my intuition I could have ever needed. Mm -hmm. So the combination of breath work and healing my codependency was like the combination of a lifetime. And wow. then within two or three days, I had researched all the different breath work programs available, all yeah. the different trainings. And I found one that happened to be like the most intense, the longest on the market, and the most important to me was trauma-informed and there was like a very large trauma component to which was what i if i was going to do breath work i was going to be really focusing on healing trauma especially yeah. in women so that's why i chose that program and then i did that for six months and mother to more said and here we are and i just like I did a lot of teaching online, lots of workshops online, and that is wonderful. But for me as an extrovert, like I want to be able to hug people, touch people, like love them with their permission. With consent. <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course. Like I always say at the end of my classes, like I'm a hugger and if you need one, I'm here. Like I love you. And really my classes are very trauma informed. We go very slow in the beginning. It's like Here's what to expect mentally. Here's what to expect physically. This is how the class is gonna go. And with that, it gives your breathers like informed consent to like be in yeah. your class. Yeah. Because my first class, which it happened how it happened, and it was a good thing because it just was what it was, but there was no mental preparation at all in the beginning. It was like, lay down, put your headphones in, put a blindfold on, and I'll see you in an hour. I was like, what? actually what and so like after i was trained how i was trained that to me is so obscene mm -hmm. but it's it's what got me into breath work in the first place so <laughs> it's here it's how we are like i yeah. it's how yeah. it is but um but yeah i would say you know i curate a playlist for my class i come with an intention i read the room and i'll pick a breath pattern based on how people are feeling because there are some breath patterns that are very activating to the system and will literally blast you into another dimension. And maybe people need that if they're tired. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a Saturday morning, let's blast off. <laughs> but like, if it's like a Tuesday or Thursday night and everyone's like, I just got off work and I'm very tired. It's like, well, let's nourish your nervous system yeah. and have a slow, gentle breath and let you relax and connect with your body in a calm way. And that's perfect. You know, but it really is just different for every class, different music, different intentions. But the, if I can summarize breath work, it is an incredible tool to help you connect with your body. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, all of the repressed emotions and traumas and memories feel comfortable coming up to be seen and loved on. Mm -hmm. And the grip that they once had on you will eventually loosen, 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 loosen to when they, mm -hmm. then they are free to exit the body. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it takes commitment to heal your trauma. And if you're willing to commit to it, your life will drastically change forever. Yeah. And you'll be able to live in a way that you want to live. Like the, the, the version of you you can picture in your head where you're just you know trigger free and trauma free and all these things it isn't la la land like you can get there but it takes work and breath work is an amazing tool to help yeah. you get there and that's what i was going to say the piece of like you saying it it isn't la la land i was like when you say it it sounds so idyllic i'm like yeah wow like i would love to feel that and then there's that part in my mind that's like mm, like you can keep trying it's not going to get there and it's like that negative talk that comes in the mind space so i'm kind of curious like did it happen right away for you in that first experience you had or did it take some time for you to actually sense what the embodiment of the breathwork practice was doing for you excellent question i have been 
working on healing my trauma for about four years okay. before I even found some context. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's like therapy, meditation, yoga, um, What else? There's so many, there's others, there's a plethora of other things, but it's just like, just day in and day out commitment mm -hmm. to change. Because, so to give a backstory, I have quite a lot of sexual trauma in my history from my teenage years and early 20s. And I really, let's just say, I love sex, <laughs> love it, la la la, L-O-V, love of it. And with that said, even, even being the person that I am, I was very much like an, an example sexual experience for me with a trusted partner or whatever would be like, all right, we're in the groove, we're in the room, we're getting it on. And then all of a sudden I'd see a flash of a face of someone who harmed me or a mm. smell or a sound or something that would trigger me. And then my body would just kind of freeze. And then I would just be like, don't think about that. Don't think about that. Don't think about that. Until my body could relax. And then the whole time I'm just like, don't think about that. So it's like, and then you're not enjoying the experience. You're anymore, not like... enjoying the experience. You're not even there, but you're like trying to be there, but you're really not there. You're trying to work on he nourishing and loving your nervous system while you're mm -hmm. in this intimate moment. It was like, that's how my sexual experiences work. Yeah. So then I got very into smoking weed and dissociating. <laughs> yeah. And so then I, like, my brain was just like mute. And then that was like, easier for me to navigate life when with my brain just being like we don't notice anything <laughs> <laughs> it's all good yeah through. and it was just like okay and then i and then kind of in my early 20s i woke up and it was like this isn't sustainable yeah. at all like i can't picture myself living like this with this level of disconnection from my body, from my pleasure, from my partner. Because when I'm stoned, mm -hmm. it's like, it's one thing to be disconnected from self, but you're also disconnecting yourself from your partner and you can't possibly be fully yeah. present. And so then I kind of woke up and was like, this isn't sustainable. I want to live differently. How am I gonna do this? Okay, I need to face what my body has gone through own the part that I have played in it, which is potentially a controversial conversation. For me, it was like, I excessively drank as a teenager and an early 20s person. No one made me drink. No one made me, no one, you know, drugged me or anything like that. So it's like, I had to own, okay, if I wanna live differently, if I wanna change the trajectory, the only thing I can, I personally can take responsibility for is, how in control of my body I am. Mm. And this has to do with alcohol consumption. Mm. So I got really over drinking in my early 20s, never really came back to it because it was this thing that put me in a lot of very sketchy situations. Yeah. So that was step one was like, okay, what got me into these places? How do I pivot? Okay, let's do that. And so then from there, what did I do? I think I went into therapy and it was pretty inconsistent. I was like maybe like once a month and it was like, I was so ready to just like unearth all of these experiences <laughs> to like heal them. So then that was happening pretty rapidly. And then, oh man, I would do, I very much enjoy doing psychedelic, low dose psychedelics to really help me connect with my body and really be present with myself. Mm -hmm. And just like all these other tools, I ended up doing a year of sobriety where I quit my job as a teacher. And I was like, I went to school for this. What else? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, what else am I supposed to do? So then I did a year of sobriety because I, I just got to the point where I was like, I cannot possibly have clarity on where my life is going to go if I'm just in this cloud all the time. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to commit to a year. 
within that year um, was when I also found breath work. And I also, this was an incredibly important practice that I don't think I've ever shared with um, anyone publicly. <laughs> I don't know how public this Now's is. Now's the time. <laughs> I was, like it's totally fine and very comfortable. But um, I moved to downtown San Diego mm -hmm. with my girlfriend and I had my own room and I had this big mirror. And then I decided, okay, if I'm really, really, really gonna really tackle this trauma and like get comfortable in my body like i need to be, to be my own safe place yeah because when i would like be in a sexual experience with my now husband then boyfriend and i would have something trigger me we would just immediately stop and he'd hold me and he'd be my safe place and like i mm -hmm. love hey, jacob ellis if you ever hear this like i love you so much <laughs> you are the best thing that has ever happened to me i love you so much but i also had the knowing that I had to be I had to be that for myself to like really get to the other side. And so what I would do, what I basically said to him, and bless his soul, but what I said to him was like, I need you to not approach me sexually at all. And I will approach you when I'm ovulating. Because that is the only time that my body is telling me I need sex. Mm -hmm. So Please, like, I don't know how long this is going to last. I pray it's not a long time, but like, this is what I need for my body. And during that time, so that was like August to January. Okay. And during that time, if my body felt aroused, I would literally sit in front of my mirror, put my headphones in, and I would literally listen to music and I would masturbate in front of the mirror. <laughs> and then if my body felt triggered, yeah, I would open my eyes and look into my own eyes and was like, you're safe, you're wow. here, you are here, you're in this room, you're cozy, you're by yourself, you, I love you, I'll take care of you. And I would do this, I did this for like six months wow. until I finally came to this place where I was like, I am my safe place. I, 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 can, I can give that to myself and not depend on someone else. That is so powerful. <laughs> and then ever since then, like we've been great. But it's like, I'm so thankful that I had a partner that was willing to like, just yeah, be patient. supportive of that. Because I can't imagine if I was with someone who was like, no. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no. Can you imagine? Like, oh my God. So I, have, I really have the most understanding partner, but he also would see how much that impacted every area of my yeah. life. So yeah. he was willing to do whatever it took with me to work through that and I, mm -hmm. I truly arrived at a place where like I can't even remember what the last time I was triggered during mm -hmm. a sexual experience like I just and if I have like a moment of thinking about the past I'm so quick to be like now we're safe yeah. we're here and then yeah. it's gone my nervous system is here wow. frozen. so it's like it takes time and yes. it takes work but it's like you can arrive at a place and I think the biggest thing I learned during that whole time was how important it is to develop a sense of trust and safety with yourself. Yeah. And like an honoring of like what you've been through, an honoring of what you can do in your control to change things and just work on it every day. Yeah. That's like really thought provoking. And I thank you for sharing that yeah. and for sharing all these examples too, because I'm sure like whether it's me or someone else listening, we're probably going home like, mm, what do I need to do right now? And how can I adapt what Jackie just shared to make it yes. work for me? I was doing something for a while called Mirror Talk. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm calling it Mirror Talk. It's not called Mirror Talk. It's not a thing. But <laughs> in my mind, I was yeah. like, this is a thing now. And it started off with me, you know, they would say like, write an affirmation, put it on your mirror. Like it started off with that. And it felt a little fake to me. Like I wrote these affirmations. They sounded like very strong when I wrote them and like what I wanted and the more I would repeat it out loud to myself while like taping it on the mirror in the bathroom it just became repetitive practice yeah. there's still power in saying those words but it didn't always feel authentic on those days that I woke up looked in the mirror was like I don't like what I see or I don't feel good about my body or feel safe in my body that safety piece yeah. so the mirror talk became like 
actually having that conversation with myself, which I think relates to your piece of like, yes. you have to look yourself in the eyes and it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you, look in your, I, when you look at yourself in your eyes, you don't always like what you see, but it's not even about physical appearance. Exactly. It's like a mind game almost of like, wait, like there's something I need to release here. And I can't really look at myself in my eyes till I, with integrity, release that so I can move into what's next for me. Totally. But it's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. And there's also like a little bit of magic and lesson in what you just said of like, sometimes it feels inauthentic. It's like. But consistency. Consistency. And it's like, in what what part of you is projecting the feeling of it being inauthentic? Mm -hmm. What what part of you is not believing the truth that you are sharing that no matter what you look like, you are beautiful? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh man, being a human being, like we <laughs> won't even life in. <laughs> yeah, it's like we will not even front like it's easy. It is work every day, and like of course it's easier to dissociate and like not feel anything and just like go through life. But then. Mm -hmm is that really the vibe? Like, I'd rather feel the whole spectrum of emotions than like really try to numb the negative emotions mm -hmm. so that I can only feel the good ones. But it's like, what I learned in my training was if you numb and dissociate from pain, anger, sadness, depression, like yeah. just all of these things that, uh, if you're listening, you didn't hear me have quote quotations around my negative, but it's like all every every emotion on the spectrum is human, and mm -hmm. and like if you dissociate from the ones that you perceive as negative, then it dulls what you're capable of feeling on the other side yes. of the spectrum. Like you can't yes. really feel as much joy if you aren't letting yourself feel the depth of your pain. Mm -hmm. It's just like what it is. Listen up, right. fam, like that's what it is. Right. And we were talking about this when we had lunch, but it's the nervous system doing its job, right? So yes. it's like, I talked about that with my therapist too. And um, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it, hopefully other folks have seen it, like the chart of emotions. I think sometimes we see the wheel, Yeah. but because of my work in student affairs and higher education, I had used that wheel so much, it was like, yeah, I'll pick your emotion on the wheel. It was just a way of communicating. Right. But I needed a deeper understanding of how my nervous system was working. So the list that she showed me of like, all right, here's when you get to that high, high state. And here's when you get to the low, low state. So like, which of these emotions like can you actually tag on to? And it took one particularly powerful experience, probably two years ago or so, when I felt, I can't even say I felt at my lowest. I just felt nothing nothing and it was after feeling at my lowest and i was like well now i feel nothing i don't know what's going on like i don't feel happy i don't feel sad i don't feel mad like it's just nothing but it also started leading me to like i don't really care about anything right now like i'm doing my job i'm doing this doing what i have to do but it's just going through the motions and she pointed out to me on this list um that essentially that apathy piece was way higher than hopelessness, which was towards the bottom. And that's what I was feeling prior. Yeah. So I'm like frustrated in a sense that I'm feeling apathy because I don't feel like I can change it. I'm like, I don't know why I feel nothing. Like, I don't know what's going on. I feel like I should feel some emotion, but nothing's happening. Just most of my days, I just feel numb. Yeah. And she was like, that's your nervous system protecting you. And that was the first time I heard it that way, like two years ago. I always thought of nervous system just as the triggers and like I was frustrated with my nervous system like why am I twitching why are my hands shaking like why am I sweating right all the classic signs of anxiety or then opposite you know when I was feeling some of my depressive states like I don't want to do anything like I don't even want to eat and like those were obvious things that I could characterize but the apathy I couldn't characterize and the hopelessness I couldn't characterize and once I realized that just because something doesn't feel so good doesn't actually mean it's bad right that transformed my way of coping yes. with hard emotions hard challenges in life and to this day i think about that list so constantly because when i feel lost when i feel angry when i fear feel when i feel fearful i think about that list and i can't name every single one but i'm like 
I remember what was at the very bottom of that list that I felt yeah. and I was in a dark place. And I know this is somewhere above that. So thank you, nervous system. I don't like feeling angry, but I know it's better than hopeless. So yes. <laughs> I'm gonna take it for today. Yes. But I think getting in tune with those emotions in the first place is really hard. Yes, it Because is. it is easier to be like, mm, I feel some type of way. No, we're gonna push through it. Or like, oh no, I'm fine. Or to live in anger, yeah. which I see a lot of folks doing too, is just like, projecting that anger onto everything else and just like I'm gonna do me I don't care about anybody else around me I don't really think that's natural for us as humans either I don't think we're that individualistic by and nature <laughs> we're not taught to process our emotions we're taught to like we don't sit around and judge ourselves when we feel happy and joy and in, in alignment and yeah, in tune. but when we have these perceived negative emotions, we want to run as yeah. fast as possible yeah. from them, dissociate, not feel them. But it's like, oh man, the sooner that we let ourselves feel them and let it run through our system as it is meant to, the quicker they leave our body. Mm -hmm. Like we're not meant to just like sit in anger or sit in fear or doubt or whatever. And I don't know why I'm naming only the perceived negative ones, but <laughs> it's just like, it's not one way all the time. I mean, actually I do know why I'm saying that because our true nature is love. Mm -hmm. Like when we're truly in alignment, agree with that. When we're in alignment with life, when we're in alignment with people, with ourselves, when we are connected to our intuition and we're just in flow, we feel love, we are love, and we want to give love. And so I feel like that's our true nature and that's how we are meant to exist most of the time. And it's like when we have all these other emotions, that's being human too, but they're meant to flow through you so that you can return to a place of equilibrium and love is what I believe. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love that. What would you say to someone who maybe comes in for one of your classes or just that you have interaction with that obviously is a giver, maybe someone who serves a lot of other people or takes care of people on a regular basis, but they can't seem to receive love or care towards themselves? Oh, the first thing that comes to mind is just like the, the sensation of unworthiness. We want to like give, give, give because we, and because part of that is we feel unworthy of receiving the love that we desire. Mm -hmm. And usually I feel like that is like a sub, 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 sub conscious thing that we have no awareness over whatsoever it's like it, it isn't until you hear someone talking about their unworthiness wound and how mm -hmm. they have honored it and healed it and worked through it and, and are still working through it every day that you're like oh maybe I have that too I feel like there's a lot <laughs> of things that it are rooted in our self-conscious that were built when we were children yeah. And unless we tune into that and become aware of what is in our subconscious, we just roam the world pretty unaware. Yeah. And so I, I mean, to try and answer your question of someone who's coming in here feeling like, why do I give and have a hard time receiving to me, that would sound, that seems like there's a lack of awareness of the root mm -hmm. and that's okay. We all have to start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. So it's like perhaps coming in here with that intention, doing the breath work will give them their own answer. Cause I couldn't possibly give someone that answer, you yeah. know, like asking the question is step one to finding the answer that you desire. Yeah, definitely. And being able to put a name to it or to anything you're feeling can feel transformational in itself. Like yeah. if you've been feeling something for years and you're like, that's what it was. There's a word for this. Like codependency is one of those words for me. So I'm glad you brought that up right away because in the past few years, I'm like, oh, that's what that is. Like, and I'm not the only one who experiences this. Oh, okay. Like I thought something might have been wrong with me, but you know what? This is just something we got to heal and work on. And it's, it's a pattern that yeah. I've learned and like then socialized essentially to act upon. Yes. So. Putting a name to it is huge and then asking the right question to get to that. 
Yes. Yeah. If you're listening and you don't know what codependency is, I would recommend Googling it because we are all born codependent on our caretakers, whoever that is. Mm -hmm. And so when we grow up and we get into romantic relationships, we then transfer that that need for our needs to be met onto someone else, not realizing that we can meet our own needs. And so it's not, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing to be dependent upon your partner, but there is a level that is um, unhealthy. Yeah. So I would just say, you know, we're all in some ways codependent and it is, of course, in every human, there are some things that we can work on to help us live a life that is happier and healthier for ourselves. That's yeah. really what it is. So it's like, I wouldn't say it's like, if you're hearing this and you're like, oh no, am I codependent? Probably, <laughs> and it's fine. And like, it's fine. It's fine, we're all, like, it is what it is. But it's like something we can yeah. always work on, for yeah. sure. And tangent a little bit, but when I first understood what codependency was, I tried to run in the opposite direction <laughs> and I became hyper independent. Yeah. Which kind of got me to where I was in yeah. in a lot of like good ways actually. <laughs> like my hyper independence brought me a lot of success and accomplishments in the career field, you know, and, and thinking about that. So now I'm finally understanding that there's a great space yes. <laughs> so in between codependency and hyper independence and just like harmony. Oh, there's this intermingling. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, ah. side note, but there's so many things you can like look into and rabbit hole in these categories. So, also don't feel like you have to label yourself as codependent, no. as independent, or whatever other terms may come up. There's so much gray space. The way that I recommend approaching personal development is really from like an objective perspective and really attempting to, like, let's say the codependent book. Mm -hmm. So there's a codependent book that I read that I would highly recommend. It's called Codependent No More. Um, there are assignments at the end of every chapter. And what helped me is I did that with a friend and we did every single assignment and I had to mm -hmm. read it as horrendous. And accountability. Accountability was so hard because there's one chapter where it lists all the different potential behaviors a codependent person might do. And him and I were like, okay, let's highlight all of these and let's talk about it. And it was like horrifying. <laughs> but also like being held accountable to, I don't want to be like this anymore. Yeah. It, it goes a long way when you say that to someone else, like for sure. So, um, but anyway, so we're reading this book. The best way to read personal development books is like, is there a way this could apply to me mm -hmm. and how can I begin working on that for a healthier and happier life? Yeah. I think that like there is this potential tendency to, oh, I'm not like that. Like this defensiveness and that ain't it. Like that is not the way forward because that right there is your ego trying to protect you and keep yeah. you in your comfort zone to pre prevent change. But it's like, it changes what you desire you need to get out of your comfort zone and just yes. get on with it yes and i think what i've been learning or in the process of is what you just said about your ego kind of trying to be like nope i'm closing this door for you yeah but sometimes your gut is doing something completely different yeah and i have had a lot of people tell me like your gut isn't always right like don't always trust that because sometimes that's just your comfort zone talking. Mm -hmm. Then I've had other sides of it where it's like, always trust your gut. Mm -hmm. Your mind might say a whole lot of other things, but always trust your gut. And I think it's interesting because I have had people tell me that they hear audible voices, whether that is um, God, universe, whatever, like that faith practice or belief that they may have is that they hear an audible voice into what direction they go. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, I got so much talking and words <laughs> in my head. Like I got three Lolos all up in here with Lorene and Lorene Michelle, like all the different characters of me are having these conversations in my head. I can't tell you which one is ego or, you know, the caretaker or whatever these roles in my mind are. When I feel something in my gut, when I've listened to it, it has always led me 
in what feels like an aligned direction. When I haven't listened to my gut, I get more pain in my gut. Hmm, go figure. But I think it's different for everybody. So I'm like kind of curious as to like what you would say in terms of how you determine what's your intuition versus what's ego or comfort zone speaking to you. I feel like I have 17 thoughts that I want to say at once because you just said so many amazing things. <laughs> um, okay, so I took an activate your intuition class. Ooh, okay. And what I learned was like people will hear their intuitive guidance in the way of um, photographs, like images coming up subtle voices like if you ask your like do I want to wear black do I want to wear brown like your body will tell you if you like are wait patient enough to listen maybe you'll feel like a little tingle in your in your belly um but yeah there's like there's subtle if we start to work on the connection with our body yeah. then our intuition and our intuitive guidance becomes louder and our intuition is 100 p percent in alignment and in the right direction for you as an individual. Yes. Other people might disagree, but that part. who literally cares about what they say? That part. <laughs> that's, that's the hard part of growing up, honestly. Yeah. But what I was gonna say is like, when you said like some people have said, don't trust your gut all the time. And some people said, oh, like to me, those who have said, who have said, don't trust your gut is, and I, you know, up to interpretation, but to me in my, body that sounds a lot like someone who has been disconnected from their body for a long time and don't know what an intuition feels like mm -hmm. and for the majority of us that's just how we are like yeah. a lot of us have as children for whatever reason had our had a severing between our mind and our body and so we create problems from here we solve the problems from here we make decisions from here and you might think like that's the way but if you tune into your intuition i feel like i can guarantee you can you'll hear different things than what your mind was telling you so i believe that our intuition knows what is best for us and do i think it's convenient absolutely <laughs> not no i'm dead serious your intuition will tell you things that logically is like why would i ever do that yeah but it's like it's your intuition and it's like when you take the, the leap to listen the rewards that you receive are immeasurable it really they're is. insane yep. But it really, it does feel risky to listen to your, to your intuition sometimes. Like, oh man, like, oh man, <laughs> leaving relationships that don't serve. But it's like, your heart is like, oh, don't hurt their feelings. I'm like, maybe this is good for me. But your body's like, no, <laughs> no, we are leaving. So it's like, there are, and like leaving a job and like ending a friendship. Like there are so many things that your intuition is begging for you to listen to. And when we hear it, we feel like it's like that's not convenient and that'll be too painful and i don't want to do it i want to stay comfy yeah. back to the comfort zone so it's like if you're ready to live differently tune in tune in tune in and tune Absolutely. up i love that yeah well so in all of this in bringing awareness to our body and to what we might be holding in our body that Ooh. trauma that pain there's has to be a starting point right so you said yeah. breath work is a tool What's the starting point that you would recommend for anybody just starting with me? The starting point to moving forward and getting started would be, I would say, just honestly, making the commitment to start is truly step one, is I have been living this way for so long I want to live differently and I am committed to doing what it takes to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then really just, you know, something that I did in the very beginning was just so much journaling, a lot of forgiveness work of like, you know, any like guilt or shame and things like that is like, if I knew then what I know now, I would have acted differently. And with that knowledge, I can forgive myself. And it's mm -hmm. like, we, we look back on life 
with new perspectives every time we level up and it's like all we really like the most loving advice I can give is like shower your younger self with compassion and forgiveness because you only know better because you went through it okay yeah that's it like that is it yeah. so like commitment journaling forgiveness loving your younger self doing things that are that will help you connect with your mind and your body so mm -hmm. meditation yoga journaling breath work just like just things that will get the ball rolling and in those spaces you'll meet people and have other opportunities that will lead you down other routes of healing and it's like oh man oh here early on read the book the four agreements that's a good one the four that's agreements amazing. the four agreements is a is a book for everyone all the time but <laughs> in the beginning of personal development read that book Such and then a good one. and then also read untethered soul because that teaches you in the very beginning of the book that your thoughts that you are not your thoughts and it helps you understand that <clears throat> by teaching you to view your inner thinking as like your inner roommate and that roommate is like not nice <laughs> not, very, not very nice and like separate from you like we we tend to just get bogged down by the ideas of like i am my thoughts and my thoughts are me and yeah. it's like yeah anyway I, I could like talk for a whole year about personal development um but i would say early steps get those two books do some connection classes mm -hmm. nothing needs to be challenging like that sounds controversial. <laughs> Nothing needs to be challenging. Like it is challenging to do personal development work. However, like meditation in the morning, do that for five minutes and like do that for a couple months and then maybe build up a couple minutes. Like don't think you need to like- It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Right yeah, away. yeah, nothing. it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You don't need to like have like this whole like extensive thing that is not sustainable. Like make, create, sustainability so that you're going to want to keep doing it that's the whole thing because yeah. life is like it's so cliche life is about the journey not the destination because there literally is no what is this magical destination people talk about it's not a thing we're just working every day to be better versions of ourselves more connected to our bodies and like just better people and we when we are centered with self and feel good with self we're able to project that onto others and make the world a better place and so yes. Yes. i can't remember what the quote was it's like today i'm smart so i want to change the world tomorrow i'm wise so i change myself oh i like that i i think i'm, I'm gonna find it i think those gotcha. words are maybe a little mixed but that's that's really what it is. Is like if you want to ch if you want to see outside change, it starts from the inside. I think that's a perfect way to wrap it up. Too. Oh, I feel like we could just literally keep talking for hours and hours and hours, I'm and we will. But for you all that are watching or listening, this is where we wrap it up. Jackie, you clearly, <laughs> evidently, are changing people's lives through the work that you're doing, and by sharing your healing journey with us. I want to say thank you because you're changing my life as I listen. I'm definitely taking so many nuggets of wisdom away, tangible tools to try. So please, y'all, continue supporting Jackie in whatever way you can within our show notes. I'll link some of those books that you mentioned. I'll find those quotes as well to put in there. Yes. Um, and we're going to keep growing together. Healing, personal development, it is a journey and it is an ongoing process. That destination is a facade we are continually <laughs> continually growing and recreating our vision so jackie thank you so much for everything you shared today thank you for having me and for those listening and watching hope to see you at our next one please share any comments or questions you have jackie and i will continue to follow up and talk back yes and come take a breathwork class um if you're nervous love you get over it and just be here okay show up for yourself i'm gonna love you the whole time Yay. Yay. Thank you. <laughs>